My hard drive is on the brink of death and I kind of don't want to do anything complicated until I'm able to replace it. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games. And today we're going to talk about fast approximate anti-aliasing. Or FXAA, as it's more commonly known, because nobody wants to have to say fast approximate anti-aliasing every time. So anti-aliasing is a broad classification of techniques that you can use to smooth jagged edges that might appear when you rasterize lines in computer graphics. Anti-aliasing has a little bit in common with blurring as a post-processing effect, although a good anti-aliasing solution will only smooth out uh, jagged edges, which are literally called jaggies in the literature. I wish I was making this up. Someone please think of a better name for these. Uh, for example, if you look at the top of the steeple on this Hyrule Circuit model from Mario Kart 8, you can see a little bit of a stepped pattern where individual pixels are resolved, uh, the steeple against the sky. Whereas if I were to enable anti-aliasing on this thing, the steeple against the sky gets much smoother. Anyway, in the middle of last year, I talked about multi-sample anti-aliasing, which is a, I believe, older and basically a brute force solution to anti-aliasing. It basically renders a larger copy of the scene and then downscales hey. it. It's a little bit better than literally just doing super sampling, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Let's get into FXAA. So before I get started, uh, let me just run my sample project. This is uh, what you saw at the beginning of the video is basically the finished project, which we'll have towards the end of this video. Um, if I run this now, uh, we've got the uh, we've got the same scene. We've got the uh, the slider and the debug overlay, which is like anti-aliasing amount between zero and like sixteen. Uh, it doesn't do anything yet. I haven't implemented FXAA in this project yet. Uh, we're gonna do that now. So I'm not going to go line by line through the FXAA algorithm and explain how it works. Uh, partially because it's just it's not that interesting. It's a lot of math. The algorithm hasn't really changed in like 20 years. Other people on the internet have explained it and I'll link some stuff in the description of the video if, if you do want to learn more. And also because like my computer like is, is having issues and I don't want to have this recording go on for too long before it has, you know, time to crash on me or something like that. So instead I'm going to go create myself a shader. Let's call this SHD underscore FXAA. Um, I'm just going to go copy in a default vertex shader from my sample project. I'm going to copy in a, uh, a fragment shader for my sample project. Uh, this is a, uh, a GLS LES 1.0 implementation of F F FXAA. Uh, you can see that it's, that it's a lot of math. Uh, at the top, if you want to use this, if you want to use this yourself, there is a, a license agreement which you should definitely include if you do want to use this as per the directions. And um, yeah, not counting my edits to make it work nicely in Game Maker. You can see the last time that this that this code was updated. Uh, which tells you about how old this is. There are other anti-aliasing algorithms, as I'm sure most of you are aware, but just in case. Uh, temporal anti-aliasing is uh, one that gained popularity, I want to say, about 10 years ago. Uh, it has not without its controversy because it can introduce some weird ghosting effects in certain situations. Um, DLAA is another one that's uh, fairly popular these days. It uses NVIDIA's deep learning, machine learning upscaler uh, to anti-alias an image. Uh, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, we're going to talk about FXAA today. So, if I want to use this in Game Maker, I'm going to need to uh, do just a little bit to set it up. First, uh, this scene, this Hyrule Circuit scene, I am... Um, like, it's being rendered in Game Maker to the application surface. The application surface is automatically being put on in the display buffer uh, so that it's actually visible on your screen. Uh, I'm going to need to disable the automatic drawing of the application surface, and I can do that by saying, uh, can I make this font size bigger? Application surface, uh, draw enable. And I can set this to false. And that just means that uh, I'm just going to have to go into the post draw event uh, over here, and I'm going to have to myself draw a surface, uh, the application surface, uh, at zero, zero in screen space, and that's just going to, uh, manually let us draw the, uh, the application surface. And that's nice because you can do things like set shaders, uh, to use as post-processing effects. Uh, so I can say shader set SHD FXAA, and then, um, when the application surface has been drawn, shader reset. Uh, next, there's a couple of values that we'll want to set, a couple of uniform values that we'll want to set to the shader. So um, we can see that we've got two uniforms. We've got the resolution and the strength. Resolution is literally just the resolution of the application surface. And strength is going to be a number between like 1 and 16 or 1 and 20-ish, uh, which we're going to use as a like degree of sharpening for the, uh, for the effect. Uh, note that this is not the same thing as the like 2x, 4x, 8x, MSAA that you might be familiar with. 
Uh, it just happened, the number just happens to have about the same range. Uh, the way that it works and the, the way that the effect is calculated is completely different. Uh, FXAA basically looks for edges, areas of high contrast, which it'll assume is an edge. It'll attempt to, uh, to smooth things out around edges as opposed to like a blur shader, which literally just blurs everything. Uh, so let's go and um, just going to copy these uniform names and I'm going to stick them in a um, stick values into them in Game Maker. So I can say, for example, uh, u underscore resolution uh, is equal to shader get uniform from the FXAA shader and it's going to have that name. Uh, we can also say u underscore strength going to be shader get uniform with that name. Uh, we can say shader set uniform float and we can take the resolution uniform. The width is going to be uh, surface get width of the application surface and the height uh, is going to be surface get height of the application surface. And uh, for the strength value, uh, let me just assign this some value. Again, probably between like 1 and 16-ish is the range that you want to give it. Um, I have in my debug overlay a, uh, an anti-aliasing amount variable, an object variable, uh, so that we can just control that with a little slider. And I'm going to stick that in here. Uh, we can also say like, if you want to turn it off entirely, which I'm going to do because I want to show the computational overhead of this, uh, if AA amount is greater than zero, will um, we'll enable the shader. Otherwise, we just we won't enable the FXAA shader and it'll just run with the game maker default shader. And we'll be able to see the uh, the computational overhead of, uh, of implementing such a thing. Uh, so if I run this now, and it's going to take a minute to start because it's got to load a lot of like textures and stuff because this is a fairly large model. Um, we can, I'm just going to put the camera about here. So with anti-aliasing off, it looks like this. You can see around the, again, the edges of the steeple are, make it pretty easy to see. There's also some regions like the edges of these walls down here where you can sort of see the jaggies. Uh, this is what it looks like. And if I turn it on, you'll start to see a little bit of smoothing. All right, the steeple looks a lot better now. If I increase it more, the smoothing will be to a greater degree. Um, this might not be the best camera angle because around the around one side of the steeple It looks like there's a little bit of jaggies that aren't being uh, Filtered out by the, the anti-aliasing algorithm, but if we move closer to it We can see that it's like an actual fence. That's just that's like that That really confused me when I was setting up the demo project like why why? Why can you still see some awkwardness around the edges of this? Whereas like the rest of the image is fine, but no, that's just oops. That's just because there's like That's actually part of the model uh, this isn't perfect, so if I zoom way out, you might notice around, for example, this window down here in the middle of the steeple. Uh, with anti-aliasing on, it looks like there's a little bit of a weird noise happening in the middle. If I turn it off, you can see that it's just supposed to be like an empty rectangle as a window shape. Um, if I were to, to just move the camera closer, you can see that, it, again, it's just an empty rectangle as a window shape. And there are some places, most of the time, I think FXA looks fine. But there are some places like that where you can notice a little bit of, like, strangeness. Especially with, like, fine detail, where the algorithm thinks it's detected, like, an edge of high contrast, but it's really just nothing. Anyway, as for the performance set of this, uh, we can see that if I turn it off, so if I set the anti-aliasing amount to zero, uh, the frame rate is being shown in the, uh, in the top left of the screen, and it's going to be, uh, let's say, about 2,000 FPS. And if I increase it to uh, to 16, to a strength of 16, it's going to go down to high 1800s. So there is a performance cost. You remember the amount of math that it was doing. Uh, there is a, a lot of arithmetic here, but it's really nothing major. Uh, MSAA is definitely a lot heavier than this. Even something like temporal anti-aliasing would be a lot heavier than this. And while other algorithms may produce technically better results, uh, if you're looking for a way to smooth out the obvious jaggies like this that is very light on system resources, uh, FXAA still does have its place, I think. And I say that as someone who just usually doesn't care about anti-aliasing in general. Like, I'm perfectly fine just leaving this off and dealing with the jaggies. They don't offend me personally. Whenever I'm playing a game, uh, if the game does give me the option to turn anti-aliasing off, I will do it, usually.
just to save a little bit of performance and because I, I don't really care that much. Also, one last caveat for this, by the way. Um, I do think that this doesn't look very good in pixel art. Usually when you're making pixel art games, you're not gonna bother running anti-aliasing on it anyway. Hey. But for whatever reason, probably because of the edge detection and because pixel art games tend to have prominent edges around the, like, you know, pixels. Um, I think anti-aliasing makes more of a mess on pixel art games than it does in higher resolution games. So, just food for thought. Anyway, I'm gonna end this off here. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub down in the description of the video. I like to post videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if anything like this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. Uh, hopefully by next week my computer issues will be sorted out, and I don't know, I'll go back to doing weird and complicated stuff then. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, you should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. I'll have a link to the Steam page down there as well. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Ganymede Ghosts, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you'd like to join their ranks, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.